Thanks to Andrew for being uh, also willing to share a public critique of his site. As with Rachel's, we'll just go from the top, looking at the address. It's in his directory, and it's called Introduction to HTML. So immediately here we have a problem, which is that all the work for this course should be in a subfolder called ITIS 3135, or if you're in another class of mine somewhere else, it should be in a subfolder for whatever that class is called. This is correct here. Uh, we do not need the section number, but it is not correct up here. What I should be able to do is go to that directory, ITIS 3135, and see that material. As it is, introduction is not there. Let's see if there is an index page there. And there's no index page there. So right there we have a problem that's, uh, I won't say critical, but it's a, it's a showstopper for purposes of grading and so on. However, that doesn't prevent me from critiquing the page and the other pages. And fortunately, it's an easy fix. All you should have to do is move everything into a folder called ITIS 3135. Looking at the title, it says Andrew Brown, comma, ITS 3135051, intro. So as I mentioned in um, another critique, I'd rather you replace the commas with something else, a colon, a vertical bar, a space, a dash. There's lots and lots of special characters in HTML you can use, um, including any of these. Just go look up and find something as a, that alternatively uh, replaces the comma, because a comma just isn't really appropriate for that kind of thing. Then we go to the header here, and the problem is that you have the page name as part of the header, and it does not belong there. You have the page name here, which is fine. You need to remove it from that. And it also suggests finding something other than the uh, arrows, which is the angle bracket. I put those in as a suggestion or just a quick thing that I do, but I'd like you to find some other way of your own to represent that. And in all cases, you can remove the section because hopefully you are only in one section and uh, that's not particularly germane to the site. So for example, in your transcript, it doesn't matter what section of the course you took, it just matters that you took the course. Spacing up here looks good, but this should be one line and it's two, but when you remove introduction, that should take care of that. <clears throat> so this is a good time to jump to your source code. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Let's see. And top looks clean. Still got my comment in there. Um, looks like you're using Google font, which is great. This is Lobster. Seems pretty popular and actually nice and easy to read. I mentioned how you can fix this. When you move your styles, you'll also move that into the right, when you move your whole folder, that will all move along with it. And in this case, you can just remove all of that. Also, it looks like you have a space inside the heading and generally you just want to avoid putting things inside the elements that are dead space. They don't serve a purpose and they can cause you trouble later on. For example, if you put a background on here, it would apply the background to the space on the trailing and leading edges. So generally avoid that. Um, you should not need all these classes unless they are going to differ from your other hyperlinks. Like, like here, for example, you have a hyperlink without that class. Um, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and style all of your... So here you have the same one, hyperlink text. There's just no need to do that. Just style your anchors and apply that class to it and get rid of all those class um, designations. They don't really... They're totally uh, redundant in this case. Otherwise, this looks nice and clean, but beware of the spaces inside the URLs. You have one here, I mean, rather inside the anchors. You have one there, but not on the others. As I go down, um, so that one um, will cause some inconsistency with your hover and such. But otherwise, the rest look good. Um, looks like the file names are all good. You've, you're using underscores to differentiate them. This one kind of gets a pass because it's the terrible one. Um, however, you should account for those by putting in the special characters you need uh, that would prevent this from validating. So you can look, you can put an, a percentage 20 for the space. I think the parentheses should work okay. We'll actually click that and see. 
it does work but what you can do is copy the URL of here into that link and then that'll make that clean because even though that page is bad we don't want this page to also be bad uh, you're using an underscore here but then here you're using dashes dash dash underscore underscore so you've got inconsistency between your dashes and your underscores I don't particularly care which but you should be consistent about it typically I would use dashes I mean, I would use underscores and they work well to represent spaces between words. Um, dashes could be appropriate if you're, you know, hyphenated things, but that's not really the case here. So these should all probably be underscores. Um, you also have a class hyperlink here, completely redundant as well, because this nav is inside the body. So you could just say, if it's a nav, treat it this way, or you could put a class of the nav, but you don't need to make a whole div to do that. And by the way, if I say anything in these recordings that doesn't make sense to you and you happen to be in my class, which I presume you would be, then you can ask for clarification and I'm happy to provide more details or examples. Um, working on down the code, uh, looks very clean here, but uh, picture at the splash park. I'm always, always appreciate a little more definition I believe that's the big bucket that falls over but that's sufficient um, just imagine somebody's blind and the thing is being read out loud to them what would you like them to hear uh, it does look like a decent name there and it's all lowercase the hyperlink here is confusing to me if you want it to link to something then you should link to that image so if I go to that image um, you actually it's a very high quality image and you probably should downsize it to display on your um, web page otherwise what happens is the browser has to down downsize it and but first load the whole thing so slow bandwidth will cause this to load very slowly and then it'll resize the image and you really would like it to be the original size the size that you want to display so create a copy of this at 300 by 350 also um, Attribute value pairs should always have attribute equals and then value in quotes. So there should be quotes there and there should be quotes there around the numbers. And uh, if that does validate, I'd be surprised, but not too surprised because there's probably a little flexibility in there. It does seem to be working, but still, just like all other attribute value pairs, you should have them in quotes. Um, here we have and again a div class there's no need to have a class for lists because it is a list so just assign the the styles you have to list to the ul or to the ol or whatever you want and get rid of these divs only create a new class if you need a new class for a particular reason uh, working my way down the code things that stick out to me uh, you don't really need to say anchor links because that's redundant uh, a link is an anchor for anyone who knows html and um, you've got target blank on all of them except this one. I'm not sure why you wouldn't just go ahead and do that with all of them. And it's good that you've matched the capitalization here because GitHub does have case sensitivity in their IDs, which may carry over to their server. So that's good that you've done that. And other than that, we've got IO for that. We've got IO for that. That's good. So, so far, this link looks bad though this looks like it does not take me to your profile so that's your need to uh, oh wait i'm sorry that's code academy uh, i may have some inconsistent instructions because so far in this class i have not assigned code academy but i do in my other classes it's possible that was noted somewhere but if you do have a link here from your page to code academy it should link to your code academy profile so either remove that or go ahead and create a profile and link to it um, because there's some great web assignments in Code Academy that are free. Same thing with JS Fiddle, should link to your JS Fiddles, not just the JS Fiddle website. Um, all right, keep on going. You have a line break and a paragraph. I suspect that the paragraph builds in enough space that you don't need the line break, but we'll look at that in a moment, minute. And then again, here we have the class that is unnecessary because a bottom picture would be essentially an image that is inside the footer. So you could specify by saying footer in your style sheet by putting footer um, and IMG, and that would target any images that are in the footer. So you don't create these classes until you need them. Otherwise, uh, formatting nice and clean, you have consistent spacing between your main elements. The indents are great. 
Um, you could put div in, you could put the nav in the header if you wanted to, and then that would allow you some more specificity. But later, if you want your menu off on the left, this makes sense. And let's see. So that's looking at the code. Now back to the page. Um, I'd like you to consider an alternative divider than the vertical lines that I presented with. Those are an example, but I'd like you to find your own, just like I'd like you to find your own dividers greater uh, that are different from the greater than symbols. You've got your page name here, which is good. You've got your image with a caption. Um, you're using the same font everywhere, and while it is nice and clear, and these are pretty, it's a good contrast here, um, it does make the small text feel a little busy. Fortunately, this lobster font is really clear and easy to read, so even on my screen, normally I'd say stay away from any stylized fonts on a small thing, but it seems to work. Um, but it, it does feel a little bit busy, and you may consider uh, going with something easier on the eyes. My general rule is go for a serif or stylized font on your headings, things like this and like this, because they're big and they can afford to have all the fancy curves and things, and then stick with a sans serif basic font um, in the body. Uh, so that is sort of a judgment call, but I'd, I'd rather see two different fonts at least to show that you're doing different things. Also, when you make a stylized font like this bold or italic, you complicate it even further. So this one definitely doesn't need to be bold um, if you're also italicizing it, and I do believe I asked for it to be italicized. The menu, I think, could really do with not using that font, going for something simpler, or at least removing the bold on it, because it just becomes too... There's just too much text there. It makes everything thicker and, and uh, just looks kind of... Um, it almost takes away the glory of the, the page, the site name and the page name because it's so thick. I personally am not really fond of those colors, but red and burgundy are very popular with everybody. So that's just sort of a, a judgment call. Um, if you found a, went to like coolers.co and found some matching colors and that was one of them, then that's great. I think that you could probably find a nicer color that would go with these two colors. I do like the contrast between the text and the background. Uh, working your way down, and speaking of the colors, uh, these validation images are standards that I've been using for decades. However, you can find lots of different other icons, and you can also make your own using CSS. So if you look up how to make buttons with CIS, you can just make text and then stylize them any way you want. However, if you are going to use these, you need to eliminate this little underline here. And I notice you've already eliminated the underlines with your other links. So if you simply style your links not to have underlines, all of them, uh, that will eliminate this. Or you can put an inline style on the image that does that. Notice you do have, um, I kind of like this blurring as a background effect when you hover. I'm not sure you really need to do the underline if you do that. As long as it somehow shows that you're touching them, the, uh, the underline seems a little redundant, but if you prefer it, that's fine, as long as you don't use underlines where you don't have links. Now you remember over here, see how that line comes out the side because there's actually a space there. Other than that, same thing I, I mentioned with Rachel, a change index to home. Now when I go there, looks like the same thing. You want to remove your page name and the, core, the section from there and go ahead and put something in here and put your footer and just something in the body that says this is my page. And this page will remain where it is, whereas all your other pages, you basically need an index for your course folder, and then you need an index for your overall site. And right now you don't have a course folder, so you need to get that fixed pronto. And other than that, I think that covers the basics. So just to do a quick summary, um, move this whole, whole, move all of these pages into a folder for the course, get rid of the section numbers wherever you see them, get rid of the page names when they're in the header, leave them in main, um, do this in all your pages so that you have one header that you can copy and paste and is exactly identical, every character on every single page. The title of course will be slightly different because the title includes the site, which is this, and the page name, which is this. Uh, do the same with the footer. Make sure the page it's the same on every single page. 
lose this gap here, look for consistent spacing between these three things here. Uh, link this, so if it's a brow designs, this should be a link to a brow designs page, which should be your mascot, which should be here. So that's the Angry Dyslexic Beaver Company. So I would like this now to say page built by ABC, or a Angry Dyslexic Beaver ADB designs or something along those lines. And this will be a link to that page. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And there's your bad design page. OK. And I think that's enough to get you going. Uh, and I'm happy to do a follow up once you've tweaked those things. And I can also look at any other individual pages if you like, but I'd like to see those changes carried through to everything else.